Well, let's give this another shot. Oh, come on! 60% accuracy, my ass! It feels more like 40! Come on, please connect. Thank you! Thank you very much! So, uh, we are st already uh, quite a few minutes into this battle, and I am only about to throw my second ball. Will it be more successful than the first one? Well, I hope so, because it means an instant catch. Nope! Teeny weeny breakout! So, it wakes up right away! It's like... It's like the game doesn't want me to catch it. Like, at all. Okay. Hypnosis connects on the first try this time. Thank you very much. So, let's... Uh, heal, I guess, because we're below half health. And I just want to make sure that I have no nasty surprises coming my way when it wakes up, which hopefully isn't right now. Okay. We're good. So, we're going to start throwing some more balls. So, here we go. Ball number three. One, two, three. Another huge breakout! And yes, I'm going to shove it down your throats as much as humanly possible. Still asleep. So we are going to get another chance. This is the first time we get to throw two balls in a row. Nope, doesn't work at all. It wakes up. Iron Head which means the major ouchies. Thank God I'm faster, so I don't have to contend with the flinch chance. By the way, the uh, reason why I'm using Lili Sigilith over Lilligant is the fact that it can heal itself without hurting the opponent, which, well, you can see why I'm trying to do that, because using Giga Drain on that thing would definitely kill it at this point. One, two, three... Oh, so close! Huge breakout, I mean! Sorry! <laughs> I had a minor slip up there. Okay, let's try this again. This is ball number six, I believe. Lost count already, not good. Nope, only one shake this time. Cobalion wake, whoa, waked up. Where'd that come from? Woke up! At least I get to put it back to sleep immediately, which is good. Wow, talk about your obvious comment. Putting to your enemy to sleep is good, herb derp! Yeah! Captain Obvious is on the prowl here! Justin Bieber breakout! And now Iron Head, once again, this is gonna hurt. So, uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go for Hypnosis and it misses again?! See, AND AGAIN! As I said before, this looks more like a 30 or 40 accuracy move than 60% at this point. And I'm forced to heal once again and I'm slowly starting to run out of, uh, of Hypnosis PP, and uh, it's not quite game over if I run out, but uh, it's not looking too good right now, unless I can catch it quickly, as Hypnosis keeps missing over and over, and I'm forced to heal again. God, good thing I'm not, I'm only fighting Terrakion much later in this LP, otherwise I would probably lose my mind trying to, to keep my Pokémon alive. Hypnosis connects this time, and this time better be it, because I don't know how much more of this can I can take. Both Roost and Hypnosis are pretty low right now. So let's throw another Dusk Ball and hope that this time, this time, this is going to be it. Two, three, SCORE! First Legendary of the Let's Play has been caught. Cobalion, Steel Fighting type, which I'm not going to use on my team, by the way, thanks for asking. I'm only going to be using Virizion out of the trio. So, unbelievably, I don't think I even threw 10 balls, and any legendary catch with a catch rate of 3 below 10 Dusk Balls is an above average ca uh, catch. Could you believe that with all the problems I had with Hypnosis and trying to heal up, this is still considered at above average. Awesome. So, Cobalion wants to remain with you and travel by your side. Not gonna happen. It's gonna stay in the PC box forever. I am an asshole. I am an asshole. So yeah, the fact that I caught Cobalion means that I can now go attempt to catch Terrakion and Virizion. As I said, Terrakion is only gonna be covered much later, but Virizion is all the way back in Pinwheel Forest. And the obstacles that separated Terrakion and Virizion, he's talking about uh, a bunch of rocks that block the entrances to their respective lairs and only disappear if you, uh, if you catch or defeat Cobalion, I guess. I don't see 
why you wouldn't want to catch it. There's a pretty legitimate reason in uh, Black and White 2 why you wouldn't want to catch it, but we're gonna get, we're gonna talk about that when we get to that point. So I'm um, gonna make my way out of Mr. Alton Cave now. Uh, since I don't have anything with Dig, fortunately, we opened up quite a few shortcuts on the way here, so this shouldn't take very long. So while I do that, something that I wanted to mention, a few videos ago, I talked about games that I would never LP, and I would like to amend that with an extra item on the list. Pretty much any RPG ever that isn't called Pokemon. Because to be perfectly honest, RPGs are notorious for being extremely hard to uh, keep interesting commentary for. Pokemon is the notorious exception for this because of how deep it is, but just, uh, just about anything else called RPG, you can be 100% sure that you will never, ever see it on this channel. And I guess I'm going to have to use Flash again, yes. This seems to be one of those weird caves that... Uh, what did I press? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, okay. Okay. We're good. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What a relief. I thought for a second that I lost everything there. It seems like the emulator has, like, two pause buttons or something like that. Uh, so, yeah. Really unexpected. I thought for a second that I was going to have to do it again. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. But, yeah, if you want to see a certain RPG being done that isn't Pokemon on this channel, well, you can forget it. So, just saying that right now, if you really want to see an LP of an RPG, go look uh, on another channel. I'm sure someone will have already covered the RPG you want to cover. Um, there's, a, there's that nice little search bar above this video that you can look into. Really handy feature that YouTube has always had, and despite its recent blunders, we'll probably never get rid of. Just watch as we wake up tomorrow morning and it's completely gone. But enough of that! We left Mr. Alton Cave, but as I've said before, since I had to ditch, um... Since I had to ditch Ducklet in order to make room for everything on that, on that team, those HM slaves and all, uh, we have to make our way back to Drift Vale on foot, so we're going to have a few more fights on the way home, but at least we're fortunate, fortunate enough that uh, we are now done with those Voldors, and you know, uh, you, you see what I meant now by being the most aggravating Pokemon ever, even more so than Zubat? I mean, sure, Zubats are excessively common in just about every game in the first four generations, but at least they can be taken down in one hit. Boldor, uh, to a very few select exceptions, not so. So, um, I think it's the woman that heals me, because I was thinking for a second of the, of the, that's a similar house that's on Route 7 instead of Route 6, that's uh, just past the Celestial Tower, so I'm going to put the Jellison back in the lead now that it has full PP, and, uh, well, uh, let's surf all the way home, I guess. Um, I'm probably going to have to run away from any masculines I run into, because... Uh, you, well, you saw on the way here, on the way inside the cave, how low level these were, and at this point, as I said, it's just not worth it to fight them. So, if you see me uh, run away from the uh, odd wild Pokemon, it's because I think, well, you know, it's an unevolved low level Pokemon, so it's just not really worth all that much HP. Speaking of experience, at least the Bulldoors give decent experience for all of their super common. So! We made our way back to Driftvale City, so we are going to be prepping up to head into Pinwheel Forest in order to take on Virizion. We're not going to do that today, though, obviously. So we got Ducklet back in. Whoa! I'm a fool! I, I wanted to check out um, Cobalion's nature, and I didn't pick the right option there. Sorry about the few wasted seconds of your life that you'll never get back. So, what do we got? Adamant! Are you serious? I get an Adamant Cobalion. This is an amazing nature! And this is on a legendary that I won't even be using. Hope I don't get unlucky with Virizion, though, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think there's going to be such a thing as unlucky with Virizion, because I'm planning to go mixed with it. 
So, um, they, uh, that means I'm pretty much gonna need every stat, so I'm gonna take whatever nature the game throws at me like a man, I guess. I guess since it's so fast, the best thing that could happen to me is a speed-lowering nature, because I don't need all that speed. But, um, okay, this is the place where there was an old man before blocking the way, but he's obviously gone now. Uh, he, uh, as, if memory serves me correctly, he goes away before you fight Cobalion. I think the, the point at which he, he goes away is, uh, I don't know if it's when beating Skyla or Clay or getting the Surf HM or, I'm really not sure on that. But, uh, the important thing is that at this point, the old man is gone, so we can go after, uh, Virizion on our own terms. Uh, something while we're uh, making our way through the eastern part of Pinwheel Forest that we've never been through before. Um, some, someone pointed out to me that and we didn't see it in the battle because uh, it was over so quickly. The, the, the battle against Sharon at the entrance to Twist Mountain. Uh, Sharon, it's at that point that he actually starts using held items on his Pokémon. For example, uh, his Pig Knight had leftovers, which, well, when the fr when the game first came out and we noticed that Sharon actually uses hell uh, rare held items such as a freaking leftovers, we thought, and especially since Sharon uh, in Victory Road can be fought an infinite number of times, oh, rare candy, great, but yeah. Uh, th this meant uh, that we instantly thought, Oh my god, this means infinite leftovers! But there's a very good reason why they gave Sharon items. And TM22 Solar Beam, I'm gonna pass. It's completely useless in the lack of sun. And competitively, even in sun, it's not all that good because that sun can go away at any time given the weather-driven nature of the metagame. So yeah, they changed it in Generation 5 so that uh, you can no longer steal items from trainers, uh, which is why uh, they very, very rarely used held items from Generations 2 to 4, the most not notable exceptions being uh, Koga in Hard Gold Soul Silver, and it was on Sticky Hold Pokemon to boot, so you had to go through hoops in order to steal these items to begin with. Um... So yeah, they ch uh, they changed it, and one thing I'm wondering is why they didn't do more with that. Why don't most trainers use held items? I mean, I know in Black and White too, some of the some of the trainers, uh, especially in Challenge Mode, do use held items. But um, it's something that I'd really like to see expanded upon. Like let's uh, let regular trainers, let Youngster Joey, use a. Uh, Use held items. Yeah, why not Youngster Joey? That would be awesome. Uh, top percentage Rattata would be even more deadly with, like, um, I don't know, a Focus Sash, so it could actually get a hit off before dying or something. Anyway, just beyond this point, I believe, is Virizion's abode. Now, we won't be taking care of that today. Because, as you can see, it's 6 p.m., which is way too early for the Dusk Balls to take effect since we're not in a cave. And on top of that, it's summertime, which means it's going to go even later than usual. So, that means that's going to be pretty much it for today. So join me next time we take on Virizion. Hopefully it goes as relatively well as Cobalion did.